Hi, this is Keith Schneider, CEO of MarketGage.com, and this is the last edition of 2012 Market Outlook. It's the December 30th edition. I want to wish everyone a happy and healthy and prosperous new year, and look forward to uh, hearing from you and seeing you uh, next year. Um, it's certainly going to be an interesting one. Many things are unfolding. Um, I also want to remind everyone to please take the uh, investor sentiment survey uh, at the beginning of this video. You got that pop-up um, and we'll be happy to send you the results. Um, so uh, the fiscal cliff, uh, it's hard to believe that the uh, people on Capitol Hill couldn't get it together to come up with some sort of compromise, but um, we're still hanging on, and it looks like uh, they're going to take it right down to the wire. Um, as expected, uh, to some degree, the fact that they've taken it down this far, the markets have reacted in a very um, negative fashion. Um, what normally would be a very, very strong month, especially in an up year, now has turned slightly negative from a nice positive as a result of the dallying on Capitol Hill. So let's take a look and see where we are in a couple of different markets. And we're also going to get to that um, taking a look at the Japanese yen because that has staged a massive uh, multi-decade reversal of a long-term of a long-term trend. And that bears important watching. But first, let's look at the Dow. Here's, um, here's my basic configuration on the DIA. You can see we have this upper channel, which we stopped at the top of. Uh, what is interesting, we are at oversold levels based on this, um, I guess, uh, five-day sell-off or more. Uh, and notice uh, a couple of things. Number one, the 200-day slightly rising, but the uh, momentum of the 50 is sharply declining. It seems almost inevitable that we're going to get a death cross. Uh, the question is where we're going to be. Now, obviously, um, there's lots of people in cash or mostly in cash. Um, and so if there is a deal struck, um, a lot of this analysis um, is going to have to be revisited because it's hard to know how the markets are going to react, and what type of deal. But assuming that um, the deal is sort of uh, uh, as expected, um, some sort of watered-down version um, of what uh, has been proposed by the uh, administration, uh, the, the, the physics here are that the, you, you are going to get a death cross uh, in the Dow. In addition, you have broken down um, of this wedge that was put in since the lows of last year. So you had a retest um, of the breakdown, and this is pretty classic action. And again, if we fail this 125 level, you can say that we're in deep, deep trouble and the market is rolling over. On the other hand, we're on the cusp. We haven't confirmed a phase change. Um, obviously, what plays out in the next couple of days is going to be interesting. You certainly could have yet another test of these critical levels of when it tested the trend line. So, wouldn't be surprised um, if there is a deal that the mar market could react violently to the upside. Certainly, you're talking about almost a five or 600 point move from uh, the current levels to just getting back to where it was um, about a week or so ago um, as we started deteriorating when the news came out that we weren't going to be uh, having an immediate deal. Uh, let's take a look a little bit on the longer term stuff. You can see uh, on the monthly charts how this same wedge uh, formation is playing out. Again, very, very important trend line. We're talking about going back to the lows put in in 2009. Um, Meanwhile, the breakdown will occur around that 120 level. And you can see this, um, this blue moving average. This is a 23-month uh, 
moving average which coincides with a couple of tests so if we take out this um, 120 122 level that's a pretty critical level it coincides with that uh, uh, important uh, moving average as well as that long-term uh, trend line uh, that uh, has been in effect so we've got those critical levels to watch and again uh, we can move uh, in one fell swoop uh, on the flip side above that 50 day and above the 200 day catching a lot of people who have liquidated um, and who are in cash so this is a very fluid situation okay it could easily go either uh, either way again 125 is important support and I would say anything above the uh, uh, the highs from Friday around the 130.50 level uh, could signal a important reversal uh, from oversold levels. Let's take a look at uh, some of the market internals. Uh, VIX, as you would expect, VIX um, with the sell-off is now moved into what I would consider negative territory, bearish for the market. Uh, we're above the 50-day moving average. Now, interestingly enough, uh, earlier uh, in the week, we tested the, uh, the low end of uh, the Bollinger Band, which generated um, a short-term sell signal, which also coincided with that key reversal pattern, what we call the slingshot pattern, uh, in, in the markets. I can go back and point that out, um, where you make a 60-day high, intraday high, and close on the lows. This um, excessive sentiment, bullish sentiment, coincided with the low end of the Bollinger Band. Uh, and then the following day, the, uh, the highs were put in, and the key reversal pattern coincided with this uh, signal that was generated as we tested the lower end of the Bollinger Band. Now we're above the 50-day, um, and things are sort of in gear here uh, in a negative mode in terms of uh, short-term sentiment uh, indication. Uh, on a longer-term basis, we're sort of in the middle of the uh, overall Bollinger Bands, trading right around the 50-week uh, moving average. So sort of um, still uh, on a longer-term basis, sentiment is still um, uh, okay, still positive for the market overall. Let's take a look at some of the market indicators, some of the market internals. We had noted that we were on a short-term sell signal, and boy, was that correct. Now, we're not quite near oversold levels, uh, both on the uh, shorter term, the 10-day advanced decline ratio, and the up-down volume. So you still have some more to work out on the downside uh, before you can get a, uh, a buy reading. Um, at the same time, we had uh, on the McClellan Oscillator, which is more for intermediate term trades, which we would call swing to uh, position trades looking several weeks out. Uh, you can see we got a bit uh, long in the tooth here, generated a sell signal. Market continued to move higher, but now we're below where we generated the signal and yet still not nearly at oversold levels. So there's some more uh, energy potential on the downside here uh, looking at the overall market internals. Okay, let's take a look at um, what's happening overseas. Uh, what's happening overseas with the Japanese yen is quite interesting. You're talking about a very, very long-term view here. We're looking at a monthly chart and I'm using the cash currency only because uh, the data here goes back to 1970 or so, 1975 uh, to begin with. And you can see how much the dollar has depreciated um, against the yen on a long-term basis. It used to be over 300. Let's see, over here. Wow. Uh, you're looking at um, going back to about 1970. The yen was trading 350, 360 yen to the dollar. We dropped down. Well, we used to joke on the floor 
after the Plaza Accord uh, in the uh, 80s that the uh, yen was going to go uh, one to one on the dollar. Well, we got down to about 80 or just under it. Um, and you can see here that the low that was put in back in 1995 um, was violated um, after and during the uh, financial crisis. But this level here was an important swing point, right? So if I zoom up on this, you can see that that level was around the 85 uh, yen to the dollar level. Um, so we tested it, traded under momentarily. We got another test in 2009. Um, and once we reached on a closing basis that, that level, which is just, let's take a look. Uh, okay, it's, it's around the, excuse me, it's around the 84 level. So th this week is the first time that we have closed above that critical level. And you can see we've been trading beneath it for several years. So essentially what we've done is we've reversed a multi-decade downtrend. So this reversal pattern here gives us a nice count at least up to um, uh, 95 as some resistance here based on the longer term monthly moving average. Um, if you actually look at um, some other counts, you're talking at least up to this 110 level. Now, there are lots of structural problems uh, in Japan, aging population, which means uh, 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 a lot of uh, costs supporting that aging population, um, a uh, slow growth or negative growth in total population. So that means that uh, not very much uh, support from a younger generation, um, which uh, is uh, propels growth of a country. Um, in addition, you have this um, situation where their GDP is contracting. They have some of the highest debt levels uh, in the world, um, and they're trying to reflate their way out of it in an aggressive fashion. Um, and so the, um, the Japanese, uh, the yen here has been really, really strong currency, artificially strong, which is also putting a drag on the economy. So you can see that there's, um, there's actually negative uh, GDP growth in Japan, and that is really going to put lots of pressure on the yen. And here it's playing out. So you can see long-term trend now in a strong reversal. A lot of people are predicting a, you know, imminent collapse uh, in the economy overall. Uh, let's take a look at the weekly charts as well. So if you look at the weekly charts, you can see another pattern has also playing out, which is a head and shoulders bottom. So you got a shoulder here, shoulder here, and a shoulder here. We actually closed above the 200 week moving average, which we haven't done um, uh, since 2007, 2008. So all signs are that the longer term trend in the yen has been reversed. Now, the thing is, across the board, and we're going to take a look, you can see that the relative strength index, that the move that we occurred, which was really huge, I mean, this was the trend to catch here. Um, over the last couple of weeks, but we're very, very overbought um, relative um, to the to um, the 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 dollar is overbought relative to the yen on this um, the RSI. It's also true on the daily chart. So you can see we had a really big move. Um, you know, obviously there are elections. The Japanese are really trying to reflate. Uh, uh, get their uh, balance of trade back in order. Uh, but we're also overbought um, on a, a daily basis. So um, where we definitely think that the longer term trend um, has shifted and shifted uh, and it's going to shift in a big way and continued, 
I'm not suggesting rushing in here. I could certainly see a correction at least down to the 84 level in the um, in the yen, or even possibly uh, down to this 81 and a half to 82 level. So, as a um, a trend for 2013, buying yen on dips, excuse me, buying dollar against yen on dips is the way to go. Uh, the uh, ETF, you could play it with the ETF as well, and I believe that's FXY. And you can see how much we've dropped just in the last couple of days and in the last couple of weeks. And again, you can see when things are uh, trending and you're bursting a mega bubble. Remember, we started at 350 360 back in the 70s all the way down to 86 so the dollar has depreciated by a huge factor and that now is a is under retreat and reversal so again we don't want to get caught you can see um, we've got you know some interesting you know counter trend rallies overall um, I would again look at um, this 120 level on the daily charts to the 122 for another opportunity to short. Hopefully we'll get it. It's also possible that this level here, which is around 117 or so, can offer some pretty decent resistance and an opportunity to short, um, short the yen against the dollar as well. So that's where we are let's take a look at in in the end we're going to take a look at one more thing and let's take a look at gold interesting in gold as well here all these markets are at interesting inflection points and again depending what happens here with the um, the fiscal uh, cliff issue um, you're definitely going to get some violence and some movement. But the, again, let's take a look at some of the key levels um, and make sure that we're prepared uh, with a plan. Uh, so here we have the daily chart on gold. You can see um, <clears throat> the 50-day uh, moving average pointing down uh, with a steep slope, as well as the 200. So the physics here, the, mo the, the momentum, um, definitely putting... Uh, gold under some pressure now we're sitting right at that 200 day moving average so um, obviously um, this breakout uh, early this year um, has tested the 200 bounced off it a return move to the trend line would not be surprising and if you want to see how that might play out if this market fails um, and there's some liquidation of gold for whatever reason obviously the markets uh, depending what happens with the fiscal cliff can react to this by forcing people to raise liquidity um, there's all different types of scenarios that can play out I'm not um, uh, a world-class economist I wouldn't even say I'm an economist so therefore um, looking at the charts um, I could easily see uh, a correction um, while the longer term trend is still intact to a return move to this trend line. If you want to look at the weekly charts, um, we've had this trend line intact uh, for quite some time. Again, that return move to the trend line would coincide to about the 150 to 152 level as well. So, so far, long term trend still intact. You can see, obviously, the 80-month moving average comes in around 110 in gold or 109.70. We're sort of hanging out on the uh, faster monthly. Uh, we're using this 23-month uh, uh, moving average on the monthly, so hanging out there. The 65-week under pressure here, right? So the market is definitely under a bit of short-term pressure. Uh, there has been rumors that uh, John Paulson, the billionaire hedge fund manager, 
um, got killed this year trading gold. He had a, primar a primarily long gold fund. They've been forced to liquidate. So a lot of technical um, forces at work, which could continue to put pressure on the market if there's more forced liquidations. Um, on the other hand, um, if there's a flight to quality and the fiscal cliff um, has abs absolutely no solution, you can certainly see this market uh, getting back over the 200 and potentially resuming its um, uptrend. If we can get above, let's give a reference point here. If we get above the 50-day moving average and the recent highs um, would also take out the trend line. So around the 165 to the 167 level would be uh, an interesting reversal. Of course, your first sign that something has been is shifting would be a couple of closes above this uh, green or 200-day moving average. So anyway, that wraps up uh, the overall picture. Um, you can see that uh, everyone is waiting. There's tons of cash on the sidelines. Markets are sure to move violently so um, stay frosty and um, enjoy a happy new year uh, celebration and uh, we'll see you uh, in 2013 2013 thanks and bye for now